Hello, uh, Mayor Jeff Schelke here reporting on Friday, June 19th to the citizens of Batavia about the state of the world that surrounds us. And I'm going to begin this uh, talk today with a, an apology because uh, I'm fearful that what I'm about to say is going to have kind of a negative tone to it. And I just want it understood that I feel it's my duty as the mayor to tell it like it is and that hopefully gain people's understanding and, and support as to, uh, government moves forward in the days ahead. And I guess what I want to share on kind of a more of a negative frame, and let's get it over with here right at the beginning, is uh, as many of you know, I have the honor of serving in a couple other roles in the Chicagoland region beyond being the mayor of Batavia. I serve as chairman of the Kane County Council of Mayors. I also serve as the chairman of the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning's Council of Mayors, which includes all the mayors in the 284 cities that surround the six county area of Chicago, including the city of Chicago. And also given the current corona issues and the unrest of the uh, Black, Matters, Black Lives Matters situation, I've had the opportunity to sit in on a number of meetings uh, the last few weeks on a variety of subjects. And I will tell you that it's been a, a very distressing and difficult time for me here in the last few weeks to uh, deal with a lot of the situations that I'm called upon to be part of. And I've tried always to be sensitive and to respond and to take in, into consideration people's feelings and understandings. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from residents. Uh, some will talk, some won't, about things that they are concerned about. And I really appreciate the feedback because I think it helps myself and the members of the City Council gain a greater understanding as to what our community is all about. And I sense that at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that are very proud to live in Batavia. They're, they feel that there's a lot of uh, uh, commonality of purpose. There's a lot of community giving and a lot of support in this town toward a variety of folks. People in need seem to be able to be able to find others that are willing to step forward and help them. Uh, there's been a lot of kindness specifically shown to our handicapped and our senior citizens. Uh, there's been a lot of nice deeds done, countless numbers toward helping people. And uh, if I was to sit here and list each one individually, I would be uh, overwhelmed that we'd be here for a couple hours as I gave the list of all the things that have been done. Uh, it's interesting when I say things on this uh, program, five, six, ten different people think I'm talking about them. And uh, if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. And unfortunately, you know, fortunately, most of the times when I say something, people think that I'm talking about them and they appreciate it. Every now and then I say something that I guess I shouldn't have said in the way I did, but that's the way it comes out. But we do uh, try to use this format and this forum to uh, send forth what's really happening in Batavia. And I guess today, I guess my first message is, is that right now, uh, through my conversations outside of Batavia and the region, I think there is a very strong sense of concern uh, by other governmental leaders in our region as to where we as governments are going from a financial perspective. And specifically, I think people are looking at the state of Illinois and the federal government who seem to be dropping a whole bunch of money out on a variety of fronts. And all this has come at a time in the case of the state of Illinois where the state of Illinois seems to have been in a pretty deep financial problem before all this began. And now I guess I'll give some credit to the governor and his staff for going forth and trying to help out. But uh, there's a strong sense about where are we going to get the money? And the, kind of the sentiment in the room, so I'm hearing from other governmental leaders, and it's one that I share, is, is that I think there's going to be some very, very challenging times ahead, say maybe a year, a year and a half from now, when suddenly everybody says, well, let's go to the state or the federal government and get a grant to fix this problem or support this program or whatever. And I got to tell you, I got to believe that the state of Illinois and the federal government are going to be really up a crick here as far as their ability to continue to fund a lot of programs. And I hope I'm wrong when I say that, but I'm fearful that very seriously there is going to be a financial cutback here that is going to be significant. Now the nice thing I, I got to share with you, I guess, about Batavia is, is that I like to feel that our city government has always been very conservative in its spending. Uh, we haven't gone off and done a lot of crazy stuff. And uh, we were very fortunate back in the early 2000s uh, when uh, we had the Speaker of the House, J. Dennis Hastert, at his office in Batavia. 
and we were getting ready to rebuild the Wilson Street Bridge. We, as you may remember, we tore the whole thing down in half at a time, which extended it into a two-year period, and then we rebuilt that bridge uh, totally. And then we were able to put scenic outlooks on it. We were put, able to put sidewalks underneath it. We put lights underneath it, and we some of the nice attraction features we now have on the riverfront in Batavia today came from that event. And uh, I will tell you through a variety of things that came to play at that point in time, the total cost of that bridge was about 87% funded by the state and federal government. And we passed a, a referendum for about $2 million in uh, the early 2000s to carry the city share because we had been awarded what they called a BURP grant, which stood for Bridge Re Rehabilitation and Replacement Program. It was a federal program administered by the state and the state of Illinois felt some kindness to us at the time, and so they went forward and gave us the 80%, and then with help we got from Speaker Hastert's office, we, got, we gained at least another 7 to 10% more in the payment, and those, that's what paid for the scenic outlooks and the walkways that go underneath the bridge and the lighting system and the connection to the bike trails. So uh, at the end of the day, when we walked, reopened the bridge in totality, uh, the taxpayers of Batavia didn't have a lot to, to carry there. Most of it had been paid for by the state and federal government. And that was a beautiful situation to have. I wish I could tell you that I think Batavia or other cities are going to be able to replicate that particular moment in time, but that's one of the moments when you seize it and grab it and go forth and utilize it to the best interest of the community, which I feel we did. And in that particular situation, uh, one of the reasons Batavia's property tax bill, the city's share of your property tax bill, remains very, very low is the fact that we were able to not have to put all that debt of over $15 million onto people's property tax bills because it was paid for by the state and federal government. You know, the same was true with the bike bridge that now spans Wilson Street or the Peace Bridge, as I guess Craig Foltos would want me to call it. Uh, which uh, was put in. That was basically totally paid for by state and federal funds. And again, it was the right place at the right time. And we were at Batavia had bike trails on both sides of the river and the state felt it was good to connect those and make us kind of like a circle interchange for bicycles. So that's one of the reasons we have that. So I just want to send forth a word of caution to our citizens that we think, uh, you know, there's a lot of money floating around from the state and federal government today I'm not sure that's going to last, and I think the bigger question is how the state and federal government are going to try to pay all that money back uh, with the debt that it has to be incurred by the things that are going forth today. So uh, let me get off that subject, but I just think that's uh, something that needs to be addressed. Along those same lines, uh, I'm pleased to report that Lauren Newman, our city administrator, shares with us that uh, there's been 11 businesses that have been awarded COVID-19 small business grants, again from a fund that was supplied by the state of Illinois, uh, to help uh, pay for some of their issues that they've had during the current crisis. And we were hopeful that we're going to be able to do another grant uh, cycle of awards on this. Uh, and our, we're telling people they need to, uh, businesses, that they need to apply between uh, June 22nd and July the 1st and we will hopefully announce the grants sometime in early July. I got my fingers crossed we're going to be able to keep the money but uh, and give it, give it out to the businesses in Batavia who have had some issues or loss of revenue by COVID-19. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is all coming to an end here pretty quick as far as the ability to do that from outside funding. Uh, that being said, uh, we are watching the city budget very, very closely. Uh, we have not had to lay anybody off. Uh, we've kept everybody going. We've obviously had to be very careful uh, and, and ad, you know, administer the whole COVID thing to the best way we can. Uh, we also have to make sure that we got everybody in town carrying a mask, and I thought I had one in my pocket. But... Uh, Anyway, I guess I, I guess I left it over on the other side of the room here. So, uh, anyway, uh, so anyway, I'm I'm talking about telling people to wear masks, and I don't have mine right here with me, but I do have it, and I will be wearing it when I leave the room here. Uh, I take it off when I do these because if I keep it on, people sometimes have a hard time understanding me. Uh, so that's the reason I'm talking without the mask on. I I needed to say that, and I'm glad I went through the rigmarole of 
telling you I didn't have my mask because you needed to know why I do it the way I do. Uh, that being said, one other thing I want to touch on very briefly here is we've got a couple of things going on in town that uh, are a concern to the city and uh, specifically the police department and myself. And one of them is our, our tremendous amount of bicycle riding we have. And we were probably one of the bicycle capitals of Illinois with all the trails and the connections and the friendliness of hopefully the bicycle scene. And I just wanted to pause and send out a word of caution to the residents of our town and anybody else that may be listening that we are concerned about some of the max bicycle riding we are seeing in Batavia, specifically the failure of bicycle riders to stop for stop signs. And the rules are, you are if, if, you're, if the car is supposed to stop for the stop sign or the stop light, you are also, as a bicycle rider, supposed to do that. That's not being act actively done by a number of our bicycle riders. Some of you are very good about it, a number of you aren't. And uh, we're watching that with very close concern. And, you know, we may have to start taking steps of, of start issuing some tickets or whatever to people who aren't doing that. So I just want to put that out there that bicycle riding in a safe and legal manner is something that the city is going to put focus on. And we want to make sure that everybody tries to obey the, all the laws that are out there. So please do that. Uh, the same would also apply to people who are using skateboards. And uh, again, I, I guess there's no law about stopping for a stop sign on a skateboard. But uh, I would caution everybody that's got a skateboard, and specifically the parents of anybody that's got a skateboard. I am told in my conversations with other mayors in the region, there are a couple of active lawsuits going on in the Chicagoland area right now where uh, people were walking in their downtowns and they get hit by somebody riding a skateboard and then there becomes a big challenge as to is that skateboard rider insured while they're riding on that skateboard and if they hit somebody and injure them you know who's liable for that that's just a question I think everybody needs to answer and the final thing that I want to kind of shout out and put a message of concern out is this past week I had the, the need to leave Illinois and drive over to Indiana. And as I drove over to Indiana and I got down into the, the uh, Calumet City, Lansing area on 8090 before you crossed over there by the uh, Thornton Stone Quarry, uh, there was just billboard sign after billboard sign after billboard sign and big ones, very expensive ones, advertising that you could go buy fireworks in the state of Indiana right straight ahead and so once you cross the line from Illinois into Indiana here was all the fireworks and there were some of them were quite visible from the expressway and they were doing record seemed to me land off office businesses in that that community uh, doing uh, selling these fireworks and of course many of them I'm sure were Illinois residents buying fireworks now this year the police department the fire department and myself all have a concern that obviously because of the corona thing uh, we've had to postpone the fireworks display this year on the 4th of July. So uh, we're, our fear here is, is that we're going to have a lot of people who have gone and bought fireworks someplace and they're going to try to launch those fireworks off. And I just want to really strongly stress a moment of caution to everybody about doing this because the, we've had some unfortunate, very tragic incidents in Batavia in the past and I'm not going to review them all, but we've had some people get killed We've had some people lose fingers and hands and eyes and everything else because they lit a firework and didn't know how to handle it and things went bad on it. So number one, for your own personal safety and those around you, be very, very cautious if you're going to light fireworks off. Uh, but specifically to people who buy them or anybody that wants to launch things that you're going to shoot up into the sky, I really want you to have a moment of caution about doing it. Uh, there's some instances in the Chicagoland area right now where people have gone and bought fireworks for their children and the children have taken the fireworks back to their house and they've launched these things and the fireworks have gone up and come down on neighboring property. And I'm aware of at least one instance where the fireworks came down on a neighbor's roof and set the house on fire and almost for all intent and purposes burned the house down. And now I'm being told by the mayor in the town where this happened that there is a huge personal liability suit in place against the parents of the kid who had the fireworks and launched those fireworks and put them on the neighbor's roof. 
Uh, I would suggest that most people's insurance policies do not include covering your child's use of fireworks. As in many instances, apparently your child's use of skateboards is maybe also not covered. So uh, you got to be very cautious with this stuff, and I, I encourage everybody to go out and do the nice things they want to do, but please be careful because as a city, uh, we share some strong concerns that citizens are going to act accordingly, specifically over the 4th of July category, and that we don't set somebody's house on fire with some fireworks that go off in a different direction than what is intended. So those things have happened other places, and I, I pray that they don't happen in Batavia, that we keep this a nice, friendly, well-liked, everybody likes their neighbors, and we all get along. Uh, but please be careful out there in this coming holiday season in two weeks, because this is something that uh, we are having a strong degree of uh, concern about. So I think that's enough for me today. I want to thank you all for listening, and uh, we'll be back to talk to you again next week. Thank you.